Hi guys, it's MJ, the Student Tech Tree, and in this video, we're going to look at another probability paradox. But this one is a little bit crazy, as I think this one actually breaks mathematics. So if you're a fan of mathematics, or you think, oh, maths is such a nice, lovely subject, the following paradox is going to destroy it. I think it's still, this is a problem that still hasn't been solved, so if you've got your thinking cap on, great. Otherwise, get ready to see your mind get destroyed. So, for this video, we have a little, a little diagram. What we have here is a circle. So we have a circle, and we have an equilateral triangle. Okay, so far so good. Looks, looks like something from, you know, school geometry. Nothing too bad. The question I want to know is what is the probability that a chord of the triangle is greater than one of the sides of the triangle? Okay, now just a little bit of a brush up. A chord is any line that connects two points on the circumference of a circle. So. What is the probability that a random chord is greater than one of the sides of the triangle? So, first off, this seems like quite an easy problem. I mean, let's generate a random chord, and we can do that by choosing, you know, any two points on the circumference of the, of the circle. And every time we choose the first random point, we can always rotate the inner triangle so that it's pointing there. Okay. So our first point is we can put it anywhere and we rotate the triangle. Then we can draw the other point absolutely anywhere on the circumference. So it can be absolutely, absolutely anywhere. And you can see that these chords over here, I mean, you're welcome to get out a little ruler and measure your screen, but you'd see that all of these ones are less than the side of the triangle, okay? It's only really when we start randomly choosing points on this edge of the circumference that we see that these chords over here are greater than the triangle. So you're probably getting a little bit disappointed. You're like, this is, this is actually quite an easy problem because we can see that this part of the circle makes up one third, here's another third, here's another third. So the probability that the chord is greater than the triangle is therefore equal to one third. And you're like, well, that that makes sense. How, we don't see how any math, mathematics has been broken. You know, this video has been quite, quite uneventful. But what is if I tell you that this one third might not necessarily be correct. Well, let's go to another circle over here. Okay. Because we know another interesting property about circles and triangles and all these type of things. And that is, there's this thing called a radius. Okay. A radius is, it's kind of like half the diameter. It is drawn from the midpoint of the circle or from the center of the circle all the way down to the circumference. And you know, I mean, you can get a circumference in, in any direction. You've got all of, the, all of them. But let's assume we draw our, our radius, and then we rotate the triangle. Look, I haven't drawn this triangle perfectly, but we draw the triangle such that this chord over here is perpendicular. So that's at a 90 degree angle to the triangle's bottom side. And what we'll see is that then it bisects the radius into two halves. Okay, so that's half and that's half. Now, what we know about a chord is any chord that you have to draw, even these ones, even these ones, they always went through a radius. Because remember, you have a radius and a radius, these are all the various radiuses. So you can see that every single chord goes through a radius. Okay, that's very important that you realize that. Every chord cuts through a radius. So what if, if we said, when we want to generate our chord, that we make 
its midpoint of the chord on the radius, okay? Because every single radius, every single chord cuts through radius, so to generate a random chord, we can logically make any point here along the radius as its midpoint. So if we make it at the top there, we can see that this green line here is bigger than the purple one of the triangle. In fact, all these chords over here, even the one here at the bottom, are larger. Okay, so the green ones are larger. But if we look down here at the blue ones, it's only these blue ones over here that are smaller. But remember, this is a half, and this is a half, which means the probability of the chord being greater than you know one of the sides of the triangle is equal to a half. Now, this should start freaking you out a bit. I mean, how can the probability be both a half and a third when we've proven both of them mathematically? But, 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 the problem gets a little bit more interesting. I've drawn another circle. Okay, now what I want to do is actually draw another circle within the circle. So it's probably not going to come up properly because I didn't draw my, my equilateral triangle properly. So hold on. Let's try to draw this, this circle. Okay, it's not the best looking circle, but pretend that that, that is a circle. Now what we want to do is, let's look, let's look at this inner circle that we've drawn here. Okay, This inner circle here has got a radius of a half. Okay, Whereas the purple circle, the big one, has got a radius of 1. Okay, Just got a radius of 1. So that's half, half the radius of 1. Okie dokie. Now what we can do is, let's actually just take out these two lines just so that we have more, more space. Um, let's choose an, an interesting color. If we had to randomly do a dot somewhere on the circle, somewhere randomly on the dot, and we had to make this little dot the midpoint of our chord. Okay, Midpoint means that that's the center of the chord. And we had to draw our chord, you know, such that this is the middle. And we draw, oh, I haven't drawn that one exactly properly. But whenever you draw a chord that falls on the outside of this green circle here, we can see that these lines here are less. Because, I mean, let's say we do just one like over there. You can see that this gold, whatever color this thing is here, it is slightly smaller than that. So every single random dot that falls outside is going to be smaller. And every single dot that falls inside the inner circle that uses this as, say, the midpoint, sorry, this is where my drawing ability needs to improve, but you can see that every single line here is going to be bigger. So you can see that this red line is bigger than the side of the triangle. So every single random dot that lands in here is going to be bigger. Okay, The chord is going to be bigger. But now the probability that we randomly pick a point inside this green circle is the area of the green circle divided by the area of the purple circle. And we know that area is radius squared, which means it's a half squared, which is equal to a quarter, divided by one squared, which stays one, which means that the probability that a chord is greater than the sides of the triangle is equal to a quarter. Now this is interesting because we have shown mathematically three valid arguments about coming about to our reasoning and we have come to a third, a half, and a quarter. Now I am going to be bold and I'm going to say I want you to tell me what the actual answer 
is in the comment section below. Bearing in mind, I don't think anyone has actually figured this out properly. You can go do some research on the internet. I, I know some people have attempted to do it, but I think from what my research was, no one, no one actually can come to, to a final answer. The best thing that they have done is they said, how you choose the chord determines the reasoning behind it. And if each method is equally valid, then you should sign a third probability to each, multiply it by these ones here, and then add them together. But that, I think that's a very sloppy um, mathematical work. What I think we actually have found is two little shapes that have broken mathematics, that have defiled logic, and will leave your mind in a continuous state of confusion if you continue to think about it. So let me know in the comment sections if you think that the answer is a third, a half, or a quarter. And like always, please yeah, be cool, share, like, comment, do all that other cool stuff. And uh, I'll see you guys again sometime soon for another Probability Paradox video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.